morning, Ruth, as well. If you do you have anything in the um, uh, that you want to mention in the chat, that will be monitored throughout. Uh, and there will be time, I think, for questions at the end, and I will come back on at the end after Vicky's finished presenting. So I am just going to share my screen and start the presentation, and then Vicky, it's over to you. Take a couple of seconds for it to in, and then we will begin. Thank you, Vicky. Great, thanks, Ben. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, it's really exciting. It's the, the first of one of many that um, Ben and his team are organising. Um, so thanks for that as well. Um, just a couple of caveats. Um, I have a full blown cold, so if I sound a bit like Darth Vader, sorry. Um, and also I have a woofy dog. So again, apologies for that. But um, yes, yeah, so thanks again, Ben, and thanks for everyone joining. Um, today is just going on the top level elements of how to add value to your business through branding. So that's what's the difference between your brand and branding. Um, and just to introduce myself, um, I am from the Creative Hutch, um, which is a brand and marketing agency in Carlisle. Um, I moved up here um, from London after 20 years working there doing all things brand. So it's the thing that you can't stop me chatting about basically. Um, so the reason the title is how to add value to your business through branding is because brand and branding are different. So we're going to talk through that, but also it's really important to get these right um, and really strong foundations right before you start like, launching your product or your service or getting the message out there and working on your audience. So we'll talk about the reasons for that um, over the next 40 minutes. Um, and as Ben said, if there's any questions at the end, then um, please do ask um, and I'll answer as much as I can. Next slide, please, Ben. So we're just working out. I, I couldn't work out teams, so Ben's going to be my, <laughs> my presenter. Um, so we'll just go on that. Uh, one up. Um, yeah, OK, that's fine. So, um, the, yes, yeah, so we were just going to go through the agenda. So today we're just going to talk about the difference between brand and branding, as I said, um, your brand goals, um, which are your short and long term goals for your brand, um, how to define your why, um, talking about your values and your mission, which are really, really important, your brand positioning, your brand story. Um, and how you then full set through to your messaging, which will ensure consistent marketing campaigns, which is what helps you to get business growth. Um, so as I said, um, I'm Vicky and I'm a brand strategist at Creative Hutch, which means I'm a designer with a plan. So I help all of my clients work out what their brand vision is and their mission and their values. And then, then they can go and define that through their brand identity um, and go on and grow their business. Um, so let's talk through the difference between the brand and branding, because this is quite um, something that clients always ask. Um, so when someone talks about your brand, people tend to um, immediately think that they mean logo and visual identity. So there's a difference between the two. One is very tangible, which is the logo, and one is the per perceived, which is the emotive. So we'll just talk those through those. If we can go through the next slide, please, Ben. Um, OK, so this is everything on here. Um, normally, I would just go through it one by one and do a reveal, but um, try not to look at everything all at once. So this is the great um, iceberg analogy, which we love. Um, so basically, I want to talk through the difference here. So your branding is your logo. So that's why it's, it's at the top. It's, it's literally the tip of the iceberg of everything that we're going to talk about and everything that you need to define before setting out um, and launching your brand um, product and service. So within that branding, um, as I said, it's, it's the tangible elements. It's the visual identity, which includes the logo, which is the face of your company. Um, and then all of that includes the imagery, the colours, the typeface, fonts, iconography and everything like that. So this is the thing that people sees um, and automatically uh, relates to your company with. So over time, this is what will give you um, brand recognition. And it's really important to be consistent with this at all times. But you can't have the top. So this is where the cheesy analogy comes in. 
um, if you don't have all those elements underneath, which is the perceived part of your brand. So this is your brand that I'm talking about. So the top is your branding and all that stuff under the water, that large element of the iceberg is the brand. And this is the things that we're going to talk through today. Um, and that's how you gain trust with your audience. That's where you find your audience. And that's how you kind of define your brand personality and the messaging. Um, and that's and having all of that defined as well, actually, is what feeds with your business plan and helps you make those right decisions going forward as your business grows. So we'll talk through your why and your vision, which is the North Star, um, the mission, brand positioning, your values, story and messaging. So this is all the stuff we're going to touch on today. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So how to build strong foundations with your brand strategy. So brand strategy doesn't mean that much to people, um, but actually, you know, as I said, kind of I'm a designer with, that likes a plan and that this is what, this is your brand plan, as it were. Um, it's a blueprint for how you want to build and shape and share your brand. And your brand is your company. It's a thing that people are going to connect with um, when you want to sell your product and service. Um, so we'll just talk about your brand goals, which uh, is on the next slide. So you, as I said, you probably already or hopefully you are in the middle of um, defining your business plan. Um, and the brand strategy should, should oop, the brand strategy should sit with that. Um, so the first thing to start with when you're doing your brand strategy is just to think about what you want your brand to do, both long and short term. What do you want your brand to achieve? Not not your service or your business or your um, products, but your brand. And what does success look like for that? So, for example, if you're a startup. Um, I would suggest your short term goals are just building that brand awareness, um, because by building that brand awareness, it improves trust and then improving trust and loyalty will then pull up that brand by a preference. Um, so when you're sitting next to you, kind of your competitor or a peer within your field, your audience will come to you and buy your service or product. So this this is kind of my brand um pyramid as it were and that kind of why and purpose is the thing that we're going to talk through next and it's the really important element um, aside from making a profit obviously um, as to why your business exists and all of the elements underneath that we'll talk to the things that feed up through that um, so it just is a visual way to show you why it's really important to have these things in place either before or at, at the very beginning of, of launching your business um okay so if you can go to the next slide please <coughs> excuse me so we're going to start talking about your why and i've put it in the center here um because we're going to talk about brand strategy which as we said is the blueprint for your business and the decisions um and these elements are what we're going to talk about today there's lots of other things that you can put into your brand strategy, but I feel like these are the most important things to touch on and definitely have defined. And your why, which is what we're going to start with, is in the middle because it's central to absolutely everything. I'm going to mix up analogies, but it's your North Star. Um, it's why your company exists, but also why you get out of bed in the morning as well. Um, and also why your audience should care about your business, because more often than not, um, most you have quite a lot of competitors in the field and you need to stand out. And more and more people are starting to buy into companies and have loyalty with companies on an emotional level, um, especially after the last few years of kind of being stuck in a house and being online and things like that. People are buying um, and connecting to brands and products really differently. So your why is really important. Um, and it, as I said, the kind of thing that gets you out of bed in the morning. So even if you don't own the business, you'll probably realise that your values and your why tend to align a little bit. Um, because, again, the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning is the thing that inspires you. Um, shows absolute um, transparency and honesty um, with your audience and then gets them to connect as well. So we'll start with your why and this is something that's the hardest thing to define um, but it also should be really simple and clear and actionable. 
So I'm just going to go on to the next slide and it's going to show you a, a little framework that you, it's an exercise, a bit of homework for you, but you can do it um, at home. Um, so this is the framework and I would really um, advise you to go on um, Google Simon Sinek. Um, I'm absolute follower of, uh, of Simon. He's brilliant. He's really passionate about organisations finding their why and also personally people finding their why because it's it's kind of making sure that you've got value in your life. Um, so he's come up with this really simple framework that we tend to use when we're helping our clients work on their brand strategy. Um, and it's not something you can do in an hour. Sometimes you kind of just have to write lots of keywords of things um, that that kind of encapsulate uh, your your service, your audience, all of these things. And then you can start kind of filling in these gaps. So the gaps here, um, which should be applicable to everything, the first blank after the two is the contribution that your business makes to your clients and customers. And it doesn't have to be, none of this has to be kind of saving the world, um, but it's just that simple con contribution that you make to them. So whether it's alleviating a pain point that they have within their business or making their day-to-day -day lives better, that's the contribution. And then the second blank represents the impact that that contribution has. Um, so this, if you plug in those gaps there, this is what is helps you to make your own unique why statement, which will then feed through to all the other things that we're going to talk about. Um, so just before um, you start creating one, I'll just show you an example. So if we just pop back onto the next slide, which is just a quick reminder of these brand goals I was talking about. So that why is at the top and it is literally is your North Star. So the goals at the bottom, the short and long term goals that feed into your mission pillars, which we'll talk through and your vision, everything just focuses towards that why. And that's the thing that will help ensure that you're on the right path to achieve your vision and goals, um, both long and short term. So I'll just give you an example of as from Creative Hutch, our why and why we exist as an agency, which is on the next slide. <clears throat> so the reason that uh, we exist and the reason I'm here today is um, as a company, our why is to guide and educate and inspire people and businesses. So that's our contribution. Uh, we cont contribute through things like this helping give our clients the tools that they need to either go off and do things themselves or come back to us and understand what it is that they need more importantly as well but that the impact of that is that so that they can achieve their visions and goals within their business and organization so this is the top level thing that just guides every decision we make anyone that comes onto our team immediately understands what it is that we want to achieve um, you know, anyone that comes to us, whether we can help them through our why, or if we have to kind of say potentially we're not a fit for them, they can go elsewhere and we will always recommend. Um, so we always work with people as well and collaborate. So again, that feeds into our why. So the next one and the brand um, strategy, um, if we can go on to the next slide. <coughs> is the vision um, and this goes hand in hand with your why. It's the kind of awkward question you get at a, um, a job interview, the kind of what, what, where do you wanna be in five years time, 10 years time? That's what this is for your business. It's that tra trajectory of the brand um, and what you want it to achieve. So this is the first element around your why that we're going to start talking about. So if we just go on to the next slide, I'll just go in a little bit more detail about your vision. So this is where you dream big. So <clears throat> it, it has to be achievable, but it also has to be something that feels almost unachievable, which does not make sense. Um, but it's just the big ideas, um, because if you don't have really big ideas, you know, here I've put there big, exciting and compelling. Um, so again, it's that thing, the reason you get out of bed in the morning, but the thing that really excites and engages you, your team and your potential clients and customers, um, it's going to be that overarching kind of <clears throat> big goal. 
that you're going to work on um, with your long with your short and long term goals um, and just have that resonation with your clients. And if if you don't have a vision um, or a, a specific big vision or it's superficial, it's something that you've just plucked out of the air, then as with not having a, stra a brand strategy, your brand will kind of just you kind of just shooting around in the dark and, and go aimlessly. It's it's just kind of helps you on that path. Um, <clears throat> and also it means that your brand campaigns, when you want to start, you know, for example, if your short term goal is to create brand awareness, it'll be really inconsistent because you won't have that vision to work towards. Um, so you'll you'll just be kind of having different messages, uh, different goals, um, and that will be detrimental to kind of building trust with your clients and consumers. So your vision is totally your cornerstone of your brand strategy, um, along with your why. So they sit hand in hand. So as an example, um, I'm going to use Nike, which is on the next screen. Um, and I'm going to use Nike throughout the whole of this presentation because, you know, most people vilify big organisations um, and they, you know, I think Nike have actually done it really well from, you know, starting up in the 70s. They've managed to keep really relevant by keeping a consistent brand strategy. And I think their brand strategy is incredible, the way that they've done it. Um, <clears throat> and they ensure that all of their strategy, marketing, um, the, the way that they speak to people externally, internally is all about people and that everyone can do anything of their goals. So, for example, their vision here is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. And they've caveated that with a little asterisk, saying if you've got a body, you're an athlete. Um, and to me, if someone had come to me with that vision, I would have been probably quite scared because that means absolutely everybody in the entire world is their core audience. So I don't know how to me, I would, wouldn't even know how where to begin to start talking to all those different types of people. But Nike has simplified it. They've got this huge, huge, huge vision and they've filtered it through everything, which we'll show you. I'll show you um, shortly um, and just kept it really simple. So it's a really good example of why it's still one of the most successful brands on earth. Um, so we'll go on to mission. And this is the thing that feeds through into your vision. So your mission is the th your goals and your objectives and how you're going to approach that. So your mission is the answer to what you need to do to achieve that vision. Um, so if we go on to the next screen. To me, your vision is your mission is your action orientated vision. So it's how we're going to create that. Um, and this is the do, not the dreaming. So it's your purpose, um, how you're going to achieve that purpose through your goals and the actions. Um, and having a brand mission statement. So it can it doesn't need to be a lot. Again, with everything that we talk through here, you don't need to do war and peace. Just start putting down keywords that of your goals, keywords of your products, your services, um, you know, what you want your audience to feel when purchasing a service or product from you. Um, and all of this will feed into kind of how you achieve that with these short term goals, potentially. Um, and it becomes a framework also for your employees or your team when making decisions. So, again, for example, if you've you're doing a if you've got a product um, and then a new product idea, but it's not within your vision and mission, then you need to park that. So everything that we do in the strategy here um, should help towards decision making and again, grow business growth. Um, and the, sorry to backtrack, but I think actually the brand strategy is really important, not just to help your external brand and perception and visual identity it's really important internally you know as you grow and you get a team it really helps everyone um, on that team um, understand what the vision is really get on board and really feel inspired and passionate about that same goal that you you have as well so you're all kind of working towards the same thing really um, <clears throat> and also having a mission statement 
can be really, really important to present to potential partners and investors um, because it really quite quickly and easily conveys the value that your brand and company will bring. Um, so there's lots of facets to why having, especially your mission um, statement um, defined can, can really help again, launching your business, but with the growth of that as well. And just to also state that as your brand changes and grows, um, which it should do if you have a nice um, foundation in place, like a strategy, then you, your mission um, can shift. It should help you determine the decisions you make for the business, but it should shift with the goals and any new products you bring, bring online. But most of your brand strategy should shift as well, but not your values that we will go on to next. But it's really um, quite important. So, for example, if you already have a brand strategy now, if you've been going for a year or two, then it's really important to keep revisiting this every year as well, just to make sure either this is in line with your new goals or whether any new goals that you have are in line with your vision and mission so you don't kind of go off kilter. So just on the next slide, we'll go through Nike's mission to give you a little bit of a, an example. So if you remember, their vision was to bring inspiration to every athlete in the world. Um, and again, their mission, like their vision is human orientated. And it talks about how they'll achieve global innovation by being innovative, sustainable and inclusive, but talks about achievement both for them and for the individual. Um, which also pulls through into their values, which we'll come on to. But <clears throat> Nike very rarely talks about their products. And they can do that because they are really big now, but they've never really done it that much from the beginning. If you if you go onto YouTube and Google Nike's first advert, um, it was, I think it, it was about a 70 year old guy, was he called Eric, something like that. Um, and he was running across um, the bridge in New York. I can't remember because I've got cold brain, but, um, and it, he was running really slowly, but it was just about him getting those trainers on and running. Um, so, you know, what Nike are about here with their mission and their vision is about empowering, um, empowering communities, empowering the individual um, and giving people confidence to do what they want. And that's not by saying we, we have the best quality products or anything like that. They just talk about almost achieving things together. And that's why I think they're still really relevant. Um, so it, again, it's really important when you're doing your vision and your mission and writing all of these things, um, just to keep your vision and your why, um, in the forefront of your mind. Um, you know, you don't have to be Ron Seal and really be descriptive about what you do. It can just be this, you know, st starts telling a story, basically your brand story, which you can all already get through the, just the, the vision and mission I've showed you on Nike. So just to recap on the next slide, um, your vision, the dream is that someday what you want to achieve as a business someday. And then your mission is how every day. So what you need to do every day to do that. Um, and as a brand, it's it's kind of founded on having that powerful vision, which is why I think having the strategy is really important. And you've got to live that every day, as I said before, through having an authentic mission um, you, to gain that trust um, and to have that engagement with your audience. You need to be authentic and that that all of this, having your vision and mission being authentic and true will just help you be consistent, amplify your brand and earn that trust. Um, so these statements just do the why do we care as a business, which is the why and the vision, and what do we stand for, which is the everyday and the mission. Um, so hopefully that helps that. Um, so the next one is values. Um, and these are the beliefs that you as a company stand for. But like I said, often more often than not, personal and business values can interlink. Um, it's the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning, like your why. And when you build your values, as I've just said, with your strategy, revisit it and it might change. Your strategy is a kind of ever evolving document, but your values should always stay true. Even if you totally pivot with your products, your values need to run through all of your DNA, through everything you do, because it's it's what you stand for and it's what people are coming to you for. Um, as you can see on the next slide, 
64% of consumers state that shared values are the primary factor behind their relationship with a brand. And I know us, us as consumers think, oh, no, I'm just buying this because I like the colour, something like that. But actually, you've had so many touch points with this product and they've told you their brand story that you feel a connection. Um, and that's why you choose one brand over another. Um, and it's more so more true now after COVID and even more so for the, the kind of rising generations that are coming up behind us because they're looking for brands that stand for something bigger than themselves and they want something that has an inspiring ethos and a strong point of view so it doesn't have to be well peace or you know um, saving the planet but it has to stand for something um, either helping the community or helping your clients um or helping your customers um you know in their everyday lives so just being good basically as a business that's what people want to know that that you are um and it's really important internally as well you tend you can if you're wanting to grow your team the best way to get people that are aligned with your vision um and are really passionate and will really work hard for what you do you need to make your values really really strong throughout and and communicate those values because people will apply to work with you if your values sit within theirs um and for for example with values just to sorry backtrack on that if you were you need to make as with your mission you need to make them authentic so if you um said you a brand that were all about sustainability and then you've got this new product, but actually the way that this the supply chain in the product wasn't fully sustainable, um, then you need to rethink whether that product is fit for purpose with your brand. Because if you go off your values, then that can be really de detrimental to your business growth, but also the brand trust. And once trust is gone, it's really hard to get back. So values are really important. Um, so just go next on to the values and I'll just go through how to work through your values and get those. Um, so as I said, um, the values need to be genuine and they absolutely need to reflect the way that you're going to engage with your audience um, and internally as well. So um, your values need to be unique. Um, so as I said, you can't they need to be authentic. So don't, don't just look at Apple, for example, and take their values because it's it's not true to who your company is. It's not going to fit with your vision. You can look at Apple for inspiration, um, but make sure that your core ideals represent your company because it's going to run throughout the DNA. And I really think value should be actionable. So kind of use actionable values rather than just inspiration. You know, it's kind of to inspire is better than just the word inspiration and then kind of describe how you're going to inspire for example um they should be actionable because they should show you should show people so for example if you say that you value integrity you should show that through how you treat your staff your team your clients um how you work within with your business partners everything should be um should show that you deal with everything with integrity um so yeah actionable um and then meaningful which just encompasses the two above you know if you want your brand core brand values to resonate with your clients then it needs to be something it sounds dramatic but something that you're willing to fight for uh you know it's not just kind of a we're we're all about people for example and again not being an actionable value you need to show that again through um, how you treat your staff, your client, your community, everything like that. So they really need to be meaningful to your business um, and timeless. So as I said before, your company might change, the people might change, products and services might change as you grow, but your brand value should remain consistent and strong throughout. Um, and at, as well, when you're making decisions, you need to ensure that your values run through those. And the only reason actually that your value should ever change is if there's any backlash. So for example, going back to that sustainability, if you say that you're a sustainable organization, but there's something in your supply chain that is way off sustainable um, ethics, then that could be hugely detrimental again to that trust 
Um, so just make sure that that your values work in line with your code of ethics um, and people can see that. Don't just have it as words on a website. Um, Set your values. Um, so on the next slide, uh, Nike's values uh, are community, sustainability, diversity and social responsibility. Um, and if you remember, their mission is to create groundbreaking sports innovations by making their products more sustainably, building a creative and diverse global team and by making positive impact in communities. Um, and these core values totally shine through um, the, the company's dedication to success in building business but also society and it's all about the individual people again but also about in achieving things together um, and I think Nike do that really really well. So the next um, part of the brand strategy is your brand positioning and um, this is the space that your uh, brand holds both in the market the gap in the market basically and the perception of your brand to your customers so how they see your brand. So if we go on to the next one, um, I, this will just talk through how you can define your brand position. Again, this is all top level stuff, um, but brand position is really important. Um, it's, it's what makes you unique, unique and valuable to your clients. Um, so if you're a startup, I would start with doing some market research. Um, you've probably already done a little bit of this already if you've got a business plan or if you've had the idea, you will have done a bit of market research. And even if you're established and you've been going for a few years, it's really quite important to refresh um, because, again, after the last few years, the way clients and customers um, connect with brands and buy and purchase products and services has changed. Um, so people buy much more emotionally now than they ever have. So it's just making sure that you're... Uh, understanding the elements that we're going to talk through um, because it really then helps you to to get that core messaging out there properly um, and to really engage the right people. So to make that kind of successful positioning for your brand, it's really important to just do a little bit of um, market research into what your consumers want. So what's their pain point? How can you make their lives better? Um, or is it luxury they want or is it affordability they want? So it's really doing a little bit of research on that and how your product or service sits within that. And then once you find that, that out, what are your companies and brands capabilities? So, for example, if your audience wants luxury, but you can not deliver luxury, um, then you're going to have to rethink the brand positioning, because if you say that you can deliver luxury and you can't, it's really, uh, well, again, it's detrimental to your business and you've totally lost trust. Um, and there's nothing quicker than people having a bad experience with a brand with word of mouth and that getting around. And you could have spent months trying to build that great brand awareness. So just make sure that your brand capabil capabilities are in line with what your company wants, but then also how you position yourself. And then the next thing, um, that helps you answer all of this is just doing a little bit of competitive uh, analysis um, and just having a look at your competitors and peers, um, what works for them, how they stand out, what doesn't work for them, and then how you can fit in between that so that, that when you do speak to the right audience, they resonate with what you're saying and the ethos of your brand, the value of your brand and your products and services, and they come to you rather than your peers. Um, so at this point for finding out what your brand position should be. This just needs to do a little bit of analysis there. So just uh, normally there's a little bit of fun here on the next one. I, it, when I do this in person, it's a bit of a hands up thing, but I don't think we can do that in here, Ben. <laughs> so it's, I just want to show you that. So obviously baked beans, because we're British and we love a baked bean. Um, I just wanted to visually show you the difference both between brand perception and then also actually the importance of visual identity, which is what we're going to talk about later, which is your logo and your brand, which is the colours and things, etc. So normally I ask the question of which do you think is the most expensive tin of beans here? Um, and most people do think it's Heinz beans, but it's Branston's. And then often there's a massive debate on which is the tastiest, but I think Heinz are the nicest. Um, but 
Heinz have marketed themselves so well and the way that they put their brand position out there, they've become the most popular. And actually, apart from Branson's, the majority of them will probably taste the same. I think Branson's are a bit spicier. Um, but then also, if you know A and B, you can immediately tell that they are the more affordable brand, um, both with the fact that they've called themselves Smart Price and it's just um, the colouring and kind of the less details on the packaging. So it's all about messaging and visual identity that gives that perception immediately in your customers and client mind about where you sit in your brand positioning and in the marketplace. So that was just a little bit of a visual element. So if you just go on to the next slide, um, once you understand what your cons cons clients and consumers want, what your capabilities are within that and what your competitors are doing, you can then totally define your brand positioning. And an easy way to do that, um, again, it's all in words, but just summarize it in three words. Again, you don't need to do war and peace and make it complicated. Um, so going back to Nike here, theirs um, is authentic, athletic and performance. And that's three simple words we all understand because we've just been going through their vision, mission and values. And it, again, it all encompasses that thing of maintaining their authenticity and that their products and services are athletic, but it's for everyone and it's world class performance. Um, and again, it's it's not kind of ostracizing the everyone. It's, it's what it's meaning there is quality without saying it. And once you've formed your brand positioning, you just can't do it half-heartedly, that's it. You've got to stick within that realm and protect it um, and support that decision in everything you do. So for example, who you hire, your messaging, your social media channels, uh, your sales process, even internal communications, literally everything you do needs to encompass that brand positioning. Um, so for example, if you said you're in the luxury realm, every touch point that your client has needs to have that experience. Um, so the perception stays strong and it builds that trust. So just when you do the brand positioning, again, just really go back to that research and make sure that you, your brand capabilities can deliver because that's the important bit here. Then we're going to your brand story. Um, so this is representing who you are and what you are and it tells that tale. So it's a story, you know, everybody loves a story and people mem remember a story more than they do just data and numbers and words. And as Seth Gordon said, you know, marketing is now, it's not just about what you make, it's about the story around it. And it goes back to everything that I've just said about that emotional connection that people will have with your business and brand and service and product. Um, so as I say on the next slide, um, how can you define yours? Um, and We've always done stories, stories go back forever. But again, I keep going back over the last couple of years, things have changed and with the, the rise of social media um, and really public conversations that are often out of your kind of control, as it were. Um, it's really important to have that strong brand story. And if you've got the strong brand story with your values and your vision, then everyone else will tell your brand story because they'll remember it and repeat it. And then again, that's creating the brand uh, recognition and the trust and the brand loyalty. Um, and it just leads to better understanding about what it is that you do. So to define yours, again, you don't need to start writing um, kind of war and peace about it all. Just write keywords or a list of key moments. So the spark, you know, um, what was the idea for your product or service? It could be that you've had you had a challenge and your service is something to overcome it. Um, you wanted to help the community. I don't know what that would be, but just that spark. Um, and who founded it? So it's not always important, but often the person who founded the business, again, that's where the spark comes from. And they've got a story to tell. Um, and they had a challenge, which is why they've gone into to creating this business themselves. Key moments in that. And it's often good to do the challenges you had to start up the business, because, again, it resonates and makes you personable to your audience and they relate with that. Um, and then your ambition. So what what is that vision that you've got for the business? in the emotive sense, not in the profit sense. Um, and a really integral part 
of your brand story is that purpose, that why and the vision that we've gone back to, um, you know, the purpose um, that people will connect to um, because people like to know what that vision is and, and help brands along, you know, especially local brands at the moment. If you've got a story, people want to shop local and that's a story and connection to them rather than going for the bigger um, corporate organisations. So um, brand story is really key to, to getting that engagement. So just to go through the Nike story, a nice pair of trendy trainers for you here. Um, that I really like the Nike story again. Um, so it, Bill Bauman, who's one half of uh, the Nike um, organization, he was like a track coach in America. Um, and he, he kept making shoes similar to this, but couldn't uh, he couldn't do it for all terrains. And his, he knew that his athletes could get better and better. So he was having um, waffles with his wife one day and she was putting uh, stuff into the waffle maker. And uh, he actually had a one of the light bulb moments and decided to put molten rubber into the waffle maker, which I'm not sure his wife was pleased about, but that's where these soles came from. Um, and that was it. Nike was born, revolutionized the way his team ran. Um, and, you know, that's the beginning of the story. He could probably tell it better, but I think it's just, I could just imagine Bill uh, pouring molten rubber into his waffle instead of uh, making some nice waffles. So, it's really nice to have that brand story and you get passion from where people have come from and again people buy into that. So we're just going to go through messaging which is the last one. Um, I know it's been a, it's so much information for you guys um, today but um, these are all it's just really touch point on the stuff that's really important um, and as I'll tell you at the end um, I do have a pdf of this um, which you can ask Ben for um, but messaging is really important for your brand communication um, and everything that we've just talked about will feed into this messaging and make sure that it's really consistent and really engages the right people. Um, so if we just go on to the next slide, um, you know, once you have your story and the positioning, the values, um, you can start communicating what your brand promises, which we've got here, um, and create that kind of toolkit um of internal messaging external messaging marketing campaigns all things like that um that means you have a consistent message and by consistent i don't mean kind of repetitive and boring but just coherent um because i think that I don't, the stats probably changed now but it used to be people need seven touch points to see your brand um, for them to start earning trust and getting interested in what it is that you do. So you've got to make sure it's consistent because they'll recognise it. So it's the same with when you do colour palettes and logos. Keep it consistent because then they'll start to recognise, for example, the colour red as your brand. Um, and then they'll start creating that story in their mind and the perception. And then they'll come to you when they need whatever it is that you're the service or product that you're selling. So to Make sure you identify the style and voice. Your messaging um, needs to be consistent, as I said. It needs to be relevant to your audience. So it should answer their challenges. Uh, it should make their everyday life easier. So it's that, it's that when you were doing the audience research of what they need, that's what where this should come into. This should be the answer to that. Um, and again, with um, making sure that your brand can deliver, this is the same thing, really. Don't overpromise. Um, it can just lead to really bad reputations, basically. So you just need to make sure that your brand message convey, can convey just what you can provide to your customers, nothing more. Um, and then incorporate your message everywhere, both verbally and written. Um, your website, your product packaging, um, your marketing campaigns, even when you pick up the phone. It's really important that your messaging, but that your tone of voice um, is consistent throughout. So your tone of voice, if you're luxury, um, you should have an elegant language, um, be approachable, but also, you know, use that sophistication. Whereas if you're more affordability, you might want to be friendlier, more approachable. I don't know, you'd, you'd need to do um, your market research to understand what type of language your audience will again resonate with. Um, and then it goes through to taglines. So, for example, Nike's tagline is just do it. 
um, which is short and memorable um, and it will convey your brand essence. Um, so here on this slide is just to show the consistency of messaging. Um, this is just a quote from Bill Bowerman. The real purpose of running isn't to win a race, it's to test the limits of human the human heart. Um, and here the message is clear, but it's it's not talking about the product or the vision uh, or the values. It's just again speaking to their um, vision of everyone being an athlete and who's up for the challenge and and you know just try it. So here you can immediately see all of the brand strategy that Nike have done is just in this one quote from Bill. So this is why it shows that it's really important to make sure that everything's consistent because then people will relate this to Nike. So just on the next one, um, saying that you're as with everything, your message really does need to be authentic, like your vision and your values, because it's that trust and connection that will really help grow your business. Um, and really don't try and copy um, or even emulate those brands like Apple that you admire, because it, it's not going to be your product or your service or your brand and people can see through that. So, you know, when you're coming to your brand messaging, go back to the why and then you'll be able to, um, you know, ensure that you are relevant to your audience and that you don't have a promise. Um, so here, just the stat here, 86% of consumers say authenticity is key when deciding on brands they would like to support. So same with values. You know, people do buy uh, emotionally. Um, they want to have a connection. They want to know that you've got the same values or that, that you're working towards something good um, because they want to be a part of that. So that's really important to be authentic. So... That was the tip of the iceberg. Um, and if we just go on to two slides on then, sorry. <laughs> um, now you can logo, which is the fun stuff. Um, I'm not gonna go through doing actual visual identity today, but um, if we just, if you can almost remember back to the beginning when I was talking about that tip of the iceberg and the first thing people always want to do is just do their logo immediately. But if you don't have all that that strategy underneath, you might have a, a logo that you think is beautiful, colour palette that you think is beautiful. But if it's not reflecting your business or your service and it's not speaking to your audience, the right audience, then it's, it's not going to do its job properly. So just if you just, like I say, keywords, look at your messaging, look at your values, um, look at your brand positioning, because then that will really feed into your logo and your brand as a whole, which is those color palettes and the fonts, um, which really make a difference. Um, and doing your logo is the fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, thank you, that's it. Um, I know, as I said, I've just thrown lots of information at you, um, but this is just that, kind of really entry level stuff into how you can really create proper value with your brand, not your branding, but your brand. Then just remember that your brand is the thing that is that the package of your service and your product. And you really need to have that totally consistent and coherent to to really speak to the right people. Because you know you can, as I say, you can have a nice logo um, and you might have a hundred likes on your social media um, campaign but if it's your friends and family and not the right audience then you're not going to grow your business so it's better to have three likes with a different logo and the proper messaging because those people will you know word of mouth they will buy into your product they will help your business grow um, so making sure you have the strategy means that you'll hit the right people um, and as I said I've got a PDF um, talking through your brand strategy, um, giving you the framework of Simon Sinek of how to write your why. So if you just give Ben a shout, um, he can send that to you or you can, it's got, I've got my email on that so you can always email me. But if you have any questions now, um, yeah, fire away. Brilliant. I just wanted to jump in there, uh, Vicky, and say thank you very much for that. Um, that brings branding into such a streamlined set of where where you need to be looking at and going. Uh, I, for one, found that re really interesting, and I'm sure everyone else will have done too. Um, 
so yeah thank you so much uh just to to explain to everyone who's on the call Vicky is one of our experts in residence at the BIPC in Cumbria, uh, and we host quite a few of these experts. As Vicky has proved, she well and truly earns that moniker uh, in that in all different areas of business. Um, so do pick her brains on this. And as I say, if you want the presentation or want to ask questions now or afterwards, I know sometimes it can be a bit daunting uh, with the, with with everyone else there. Then do take her up on that but also contact us through the BIPC if, if you need any other information because we can put you in touch with people of this sort of caliber uh, and they're the people that are going to really add value to your journey as starting out in business. Um, I am just, this is all quite new to us. We are quite a new service. So I'm just making sure that I can see the chat to make sure I'm not missing. Uh, no, we've just got Chris saying it's cold in Barrow. Um, if there are no questions uh, right now, um, then thank you for coming. Feel free to, to log out. I will uh, stop the recording. Something else I must remember to do. Maybe people will ask 